We will soon see in action physics that um, classical mechanics is obtained uh, from what we call the stationary action principle. We will discuss what is an action later, but first let me focus on the concept of stationarity. A trivial example of a stationary function is a constant. f is stationary because it doesn't vary with x. But what about um, the case of a function which is not a constant? Take for instance the case of a parabola. Let me now consider the variation of f between x0 and x0 plus epsilon. The variation or rate of change can be defined as For an infinitely small epsilon, this is the definition of a derivative. By definition, we say that f is stationary in the point x0 when um, it doesn't vary at this point, and that's quantified by uh, the derivative, so we have stationary points when the derivative is zero. Coming back to our parabola f equal x squared, um, its derivative f prime is equal to 2x, and it is zero for uh, x equal zero, so in this case the stationary point is at x equal zero. You see that um, if uh, we were to take epsilon um, very small, we could approximate the function f between x0 and x0 plus epsilon by a straight line um, with a corresponding equation. Of course, this is only true for epsilon um, infinitely small. In general, um, we have other terms which could be uh, in epsilon squared, in epsilon 3, etc. But because all these terms are naturally dominated by uh, epsilon squared for small epsilon, because epsilon 3 will be even smaller than epsilon squared, epsilon 4 will be even smaller than epsilon 3, etc., we call these terms of the order of epsilon squared, which we write like that. We call the first term f of x not the zeroth order in epsilon, because it doesn't depend on epsilon, and the second term the first order in epsilon, while all the terms in epsilon squared and higher are called higher order. It is important to notice that in order to characterize the stationarity of a function, we only look at the first order. For instance, if we are at a stationary point in x0, so f prime of x0 is 0, but the higher order uh, could be non-zero. However, we don't care because uh, what matters is only the first order in order to characterize the stationarity. You may have heard of Taylor expansion, so what we did when we wrote f of x0 plus epsilon is an example of a first order Taylor expansion.